In this video, we want to take one, two different lists, and with an Excel worksheet formula, append them into a single column. Then with Power Query, do the same thing. Now we can use the index function to look up the first table and then the second table as we copy down the column. The trick is in Array, those are the items we need to go and get and bring back to this column. As we copy down row 6 and above, I need the first list. But past the sixth row, I need list 2. Then in row number, I need position in one of the lists to get. I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to start with a number incrementer. And we use the rows. And because I'm sitting in F3, F$3, colon F3. That's an expandable range where rows counts how many rows. Control Enter and copy it down. In any cell, if I hit F2, you can see that cell reference is relative, but that is locked. So it's counting from 3 to 7, which gives us 5. Now I need to ask the question, are you row 6 or less? So I say, are you less than or equal to? And I'll use rows. This is an Excel table. Both of them are, but they have defined names. The first one is called Name1. Now right now, that'll give me 6 all the way down. Control Enter, double click and send it down. 1 to 6 is less than or equal to 6, but all of these are greater than. That's going to be the trigger inside of the if. So after the equal sign, I type if. The logical test, well, there it is. If we're less than row 6, I'm actually going to use both of these pieces, Control CC, to open up the clipboard. There it is. I'm going to use both of these pieces a couple times, Control C, so I have both of those. Now, the value of true, well, I want to count 1 to 6, comma. Otherwise, for value of false, we're going to need the numbers 1 to 5. So we take the full incrementer, 1 to 13, and we subtract the count of the number of items in the first table. Now, that would give us negatives all the way up to that row. But right there, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So that's our value of false. We come to the end, close parentheses. Control Enter, double click and send it down. 1 to 6, 1 to 5. That's perfect for the row number inside of index. Now, in the top cell, we hit F2. That's going to be inside of index. But the first argument needs the same logical test. So I'm going to copy that. And then right after the equal sign, index, I'm going to type a comma. And we have exactly what we want inside of row number. But in array, Control V, I'm going to move the screen tip and click inside the if. And for value if true, we actually want the complete column from our first list. So I type name 1. Now I type a comma, value if false, name 2. Now when I close parentheses, the if in array argument is delivering one of two columns. And then the if in the row number is delivering one of two different types of incrementers. So now I can come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. That is amazing. 1 to 6 names from here, 1 to 5 names from here. Now, if I add a new row, it's not going to work immediately. So if I add Ed, it works, uh-oh, and it didn't automatically copy down, so it's missing Gigi. So I actually have to manually copy this down. Now, I tried all sorts of the new dynamic array formulas, but the dynamic arrays can't have an array with an array. And I got into endless trouble trying to have these two things with the sequence function here delivering the whole array. So if anyone can figure out how to do it with the dynamic arrays, post in the comments below. Now, that's the hard way. The easy way, of course, is Power Query. I've already converted both of these to tables, table, and named them. Name 1, name 2. So I go up to Data. With my cursor in the first list, I click From Table or Range. That brings me to the Power Query window. Over here, I see my query name. Close and load, close and load to, only create a connection, click OK. I'll do the same thing for the second list. 
Close and load, close and load to, only create a connection. I have my two names. Now I can come up to Get Data, Combine Queries, Append. We have two tables, but you could do this with more than two. Name one, name two. Now, both of the field names at the top have the same name, so this will work. I'm going to name this something like one list. That is amazing. Much easier than that formula. Close and load two. Table existing. Click OK. And now when I add a new name, Chantel. Well, neither one of them update, but with Power Query, I right click, refresh. Down here, I have to click and drag. Here's your bonus formula. If we add an extra if and run this logical test asking the question if the incrementer is greater than the total counts of both tables, then please show nothing. Otherwise, run the formula. So now, if I add a new name, before I hit Enter, I'm looking right there. Enter. That moved down, and there's DIM. Right click, refresh. All right, so we have Power Query, that formula, or this one. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to learn more about number incrementers, check out this video. Want to learn some more about Power Query? Here's a video for you.